In this video lesson, we talk about an application which is force. After you first learn about a three-dimensional coordinate system and basic definitions of vectors, the problem says a 100-pound weight hangs from the wire as shown below. Find the tension or forces T1 and T2 in both wires and their magnitude. Here's the picture of the problem. Notice that the T1 is a vector that pulls upward in the second quadrant, and T2 is the vector that pulls upward in the first, qu first quadrant. Notice that the angle that the first wire forms with the horizontal line is 50 degrees, and the angle that's formed with T2 with the horizontal line is 32 degrees. One thing we need to know is that when we take T1 and add T2 to it, it should equal to 100 pounds. Although T1 and T2 they are vectors, which means that they have directions associated with them, 100 pounds is simply just a scalar. So what we need to do is to actually write a vector equation that equal to the both of them, which we'll talk about later. The first thing we do is to set up some sort of artificial coordinate system so we can actually do our calculations with. I'm going to assume that the x-axis is that orange dashed line passes through the point of intersections of all three different lines. And the y-axis is the vertical directions that's also passing through all three points. Once you have this coordinate system defined, then we can let the origin be the point of intersections of all these three things intersect. Our next step is to break, out, break down the problem into pieces. If we focus on the left-hand side of this picture, where we have the T1 vector pointing in a direction that is pointing, then we can draw a right triangle with the 50-degree angle as indicated in the picture. Notice that the length of the side that is adjacent to the 50-degree angle is given by the magnitude of T1 times cosine of 50. And the length of the opposite side to the 50 degree angle is length of T1 times sine of 50. And you get these from the definition of trig functions. We notice that T1 is actually a vector. You can't use just magnitude to describe it. You actually have to put directions associated with it as well. So the x direction of the T1 vector is going to be the length of that direction, which is given by the magnitude of T1 times cosine 50 degrees, times a unit vector that goes along the same direction of the x-axis. Well, that is given by the vector i. Similarly, the y component of the T1 vector is given by the length times the direction. The length is the magnitude of T1 times sine of 50 degrees the direction that sits along the direction of y-axis is given by the vector j. And this is how we arrive at the expressions of t1 that's shown below there. Notice that one thing, though, the direction of the x, the x directions of t1 vector actually points in the negative directions of the x-axis. That is why we're going to add a negative sign in front of it. Similarly, we can draw a picture for the T2 directions. And we have the corresponding length for each side of the triangle, as shown here. So now, the T2 vector can be written as its x components magnitude, which is the magnitude of T2 times cosine of 32 degrees times the direction, see this is the direction without any magnitude associated with it, that's the direction of i, plus the y component magnitude, which is the magnitude of t2 length times sine of 32 degrees, and then multiply by the direction j. Now that we've had expressions for t1 vector and t2 vectors, we're going to try to connect those two things with another fact that we haven't used yet. We know that uh, t2 plus t1 should be equal to 100 pounds. As I, and as I mentioned before, you need to write this equality in terms of the directions as well. 
this is how we know that it's going to be T1 plus T2 equals 100J. It is 100J because the weight is pulling downward in along the y-axis, so there's actually no weight distributed along the x-directions. That's why you do not need any expression for i. The next thing we do then is to use this fact to equate the i and j components of the vectors. In particular, the i's component of the t1 vector is right here. The i's component of the t2 vector is right here. If you add these two things together, it should be equal to the i-th component of the right-hand side, but there is no y components, well, there is no i-th component um, from this expression of 100j. That's why when we add these two together, it should be equal to 0. Uh, similarly, if we add the j-th component of t1 and the jth component of t2, it should actually be equal to the 100 on the right hand side. So this is how we get this following linear systems of equation. The first equation denotes the ith component, the second equation denotes the jth component sum. Notice that I'm actually using a simplified notation here, just to sim just save you some writing here. So I'm going to let the magnitude of t1 vector be x, and magnitude of t2 vector be y, so we don't have to write as much. Notice this is a linear system of two equations with two unknowns to solve, i.e. the x and the y variables. So there's going to be some rounding involved because cosine 50 and sine 32 on cosine to 32 and sine 50, they're actually not nice numbers to work with. So I'm going to use four-digit rounding here to solve the system's equation. To spare you with all the detailed algebra, which you can do it on your own, we get the y equals to 64.92 and x equals to about 85.64 after we've rounded to two digits from the four-digit rounding answers in prior steps. To finish off the problem, all we need to do is to substitute the appropriate x and y values into the expression for t1 and t2. So for example, t2 says to do um, the calculation right here. Well, t the magnitude of t2 was denoted by the y value, so we actually put the y value in here, and then multiply that by the cosine of 32 degrees. This is going to give you a number, and that number sits in front of the directions of i. Uh, same thing, you have the magnitude of um, t2 here, but that's also equal to the y value. Multiply by the sine of 32 degrees, that gives you another number that sits in front of the j. If you do the same thing for the direction, uh, the vector t1, you can get something similar. So if you follow the calculations I've just described, you should get the t1 vector to be negative 55.05i plus 65.6j, and t2 should be 55.05i plus 34.4j. And this concludes the video problem.